He wants to be able to tell your mom, hey, hey, I didn't right. have nothing to do with it. Accident. She did that on her own. <laughs> I didn't help her because exactly. you don't want. He, he didn't. Gets, want, he gets yeah, because <laughs> I'm sure she's like, you are not. Take she hates it uh -huh. out there. <laughs> she is like, why? Do you not love your life? Like, yeah. you love your life. Are you right? okay? <laughs> like, I do this because I love my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an right. adrenaline thing. It's it's fun. That's cool. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Jeff McMahon, and I play the piano for people. I've played on some big records, played on some big stages, and I've played with some big stars. Big or small, they're all the same taking someone with a dream, playing their song, and trying to get them further up the ladder. So that's what we'll do here. Have a conversation, maybe shine a light, and play some music. And I'll be on piano. This is McMahon on Keys. American Blonde, back again. Woohoo! Woo so excited. Well, I say again, we we did attempt to do this once before. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> and uh, I figured out that there were some things that I had not figured out yet. It happens, man. So, yeah. so thank you for showing back up, being patient and yeah. understanding. Absolutely, man. I mean, we totally get it. We've been there, done that before as well. That's so. right. And it's always fun hanging out with you. So as many times as we can do that, we're down for we'll it. We'll do it well, 10 more times. That's right. <laughs> well, thanks. Um, Obviously, this is kind of a new adventure for me. So, yeah, so cool. Um, I love it. 30 years on the road as a musician has not prepared me for building a podcast yet. So, right? It's a different world. It is. It? it is. <laughs> um, so, I know you've got a lot going on. We did our earlier interview a number of months ago. Um, we've certainly talked through that time, but a lot has changed since then. So many yes. things. So, um, give us kind of the, the current. State of the Union as far as American Blonde, and then let's start breaking down some of your songs. Well, yeah, absolutely. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're two sisters from the Mississippi Delta. I'm Natalia. I'm Tinka. And we are in a band called American Blonde. Yeah. And uh, that's exactly the reason why we call ourselves American Blonde, you know, especially doing what we love together all the time is making music. That's and right. That's actually one of the very first things that we did together mm -hmm. growing up. Like that's exactly how we, we bonded and started playing at like nine and 10 years old, you yeah. know, doing the drums and guitar, guitar and everything else in between. That also does piano and all kinds of things. Not and, as good um, as Jeff, but <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> She could try. No, <laughs> you're good. Um, but yeah, we just really found our love and passion and uh, sisterly bond yeah. over playing music together. So we grew up and we played in all the juke joints and uh, hot tamale hot festivals, tamale festivals and, man, uh, all the good old southern things going on down there. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now let's let's be clear. Yeah. You just said that you played juke joints. Yeah. Okay. Now juke joints. <laughs> yeah. Typically are kind of di old dilapidated yep. gambling in the back Preach. bars. Yep. Yep. You're going to the <laughs> juke points because you can't get into other places. Yep. You just said you were doing this when you were 9 and 10, 11 exactly. years old. Exactly. I think our first, <laughs> we started playing at 9 and 10, so I think our first official gig at a juke joint, we were yeah. still 13 or 12. Yeah. So yeah. And it freaks people out sometimes because uh, growing up, people, right. people see us and they're like, oh, where do you guys play? Like, you're in a band, do you play at churches? And we're like, man, we just yeah. got out of this smoking bar like yeah. yesterday, like 1 a.m. <laughs> it's <laughs> great. We were really introduced into the musician lifestyle like yeah. very very early on in life yeah. but like all in good things is because you know especially growing up in a small town and anybody listening if you're from a small town you totally get it yeah you know? yeah it's a lifestyle everyone knows you everyone loves you and so right. of course we will be honest anytime we did these fun juke joint festivals or gigs we would we would play like four hour gigs you know people would be smoking and drinking but mm. we always had the owners of these restaurants or we had our own like security like that right. would make sure that yeah. we were right. Everybody okay and protected took at all times good care of us for sure yeah so we never like had any troubles or anything. it just felt like fun for us we had no idea like you know yeah. we were not supposed to be in the places that we were <laughs> and so the reason by the way is the why we were actually playing juke joint festivals is because where we're from it's it's the delta so that's exactly where uh you know the birthplace of all american music originated yeah, right. so right 
BB King is 40 minutes in one direction and yeah. Robert Johnson. Muddy Waters. Um, yeah. The yeah. Crossroads is like 10 yeah. minutes from our uh, house we grew up in in Cleveland. Yeah. So, so really we, cool. we wanted to be blues musicians. So we just started playing all these blues songs and we got to open for BB King uh, a few times for his birthday homecoming. Which and is so fun. I was just he amazing. Put our hat on and he was wearing our merch and everything. Yeah. And it was just. So surreal. He's just the nicest guy. So you've like, ever you can make BB King smile. You, you life goal. Yeah. You know? well, I remember. <laughs> I remember hearing a story about um, you saving up for a Gibson, right? Yes. Yeah. Specifically, so BB could sign my guitar, right? Because, because he, he would not. Yeah. He doesn't sign any other guitar except for Gibsons, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Well, that's a problem because I don't have. One I don't yet. have a Gibson." Because right. <laughs> so Lucille, run. Lucille was a Gibson, that's if correct. I remember. Right. Okay, that's which right. is his guitar. Yeah. Oh yep. wow. Yeah. So I got um, what a treasure. I got really lucky. I ended up uh, saving up, and I got this big, heavy Les Paul, and um, I was learning how to play the electric on it. Right. So it, it all worked out. Um, so he ended up signing that one, and then. They asked us back to play the next year. So I was like, I got to I got to get another guitar. <laughs> and so I remember asking some musician friends and a friend of ours that owns a music store is like, here, here, take this other Les Paul. So it was like I had this black Les Paul that yeah. was much, much cheaper, of course. But right. maybe signed that one, too. So it was just great. Man, you know, so much fun, fun little memories. Up in the Delta, man. Yeah. Well, it's it's just so I know we've talked about it before, but I just try to envision these two little blonde girls in a blues band <laughs> singing about woe is me. Mom and dad won't yeah. let me watch the Disney channel. <laughs> right. You know, I don't, you know, I didn't make the cheerleading squad and you know, whatever you write about blues music at, right. at nine or 10 years old. I mean, you've got the outlaw country, which is Willie and Waylon and Johnny mm -hmm. Cash. So are we looking to have muddy waters, John Lee hooker, <laughs> An John American Hunter blonde? Was, yeah. Yes, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> I love this question because it, it, it really does describe exactly yeah. the sound of, you know, what American Blonde became to be. So yeah. getting into the songwriting, um, do you remember, I remember singing like St. James Infirmary and things uh, like, good. children did yeah. not know about these kinds of songs. I know. And so I remember really paying attention to the writing style and I thought it was really, really cool. However... We did as much as we could with blues. And then, you know, little kids, they, they're constantly growing and changing their minds and finding new outlets to express themselves. And so, styles. Styles are changing. Styles. Yeah. So Tinka was really honing on, like, becoming a uh, just a really rockin' drummer. Yeah. And so she was like, Ow. we're yeah. playing ACDC. We're playing... Uh, we're uh, doing some sweet child. Guns and Roses, <laughs> yeah. We're doing all of the things. And, yeah, so I really started leaning more towards rock, rock. later on in our juvenile years of playing blues music yeah and so then we shifted into that um yeah kind of way and we had then, like a bluesy classic rock kind of yeah. genre and then we uh stumbled into this restaurant bar in the mississippi delta and they were holding a competition for the texco that's country showdown right. we we're like country that's cool we love country music yeah, too we right. grew up with everything exactly we loved it we were like we don't do a lot of it but we love it and we're gonna give it a try so and we so we yeah. entered that competition and it ended up taking us all the way to here in Nashville, our first time, I think, like of us being seriously playing in Nashville yeah. was at the Ryman Auditorium. 2014. That's right. And I remember entering in that competition. They said you really get brownie points if you write your own song. Okay. And I remember being super young. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I was like 15 and yeah. I was like, I'm going to write a I like song. brownie points and I like writing songs. I would write little songs about my dogs and stuff growing up. But yeah. like, I'm like, let's write a real country song. So I wrote a song called Cowboys. <laughs> I don't know how okay. much more country you could get. <laughs> exactly. And so I wrote a song called Cowboys, and it was on our very first album we ever did as sisters. Right. And, um, yeah, and that actually landed us right where Tinka said. And then after that whole journey and coming to Nashville and really getting to soak up everything, I learned that I love the storytelling aspect. I love the writing yeah, more man. so in the countryside. And so – that's kind of when we found our footprint mm -hmm. here in country music. And so now we're just this melting pot of all the things. Of all the blues, influences. rock, and country. Yeah. We like to call it CPR, country pop rock. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, certainly, I mean, I've watched country music change a lot. Yeah, I'm over sure. The time. So, oh, yeah. so it, 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 it's always going to evolve. Now, as a songwriter, as a guitar player, I'm sure you find it's a lot easier for you to find influences in the country genre 
than 100%. it would be Tinka yes. for you. Yes. So, so the idea of you kind of leaning into the rock thing, and I want to say, um, it, you're going to find more people to emulate in that right. area because yeah. it's more dynamic. It's more visual. There are people, they have more of a role. I, I want to say that you, you kind of latched on to David Grohl. Is that right? Oh my gosh. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And Taylor <laughs> Hawkins and all the greats. I just love that stuff. Yeah. Dave Grohl's always been like my favorite top yeah. style. Who's with the Foo Fighters. Who's with the Foo Fighters. She loves Foo Fighters. Right. Right. I yeah. just, I, I loved him when he was doing his, you know, thing back in the day as well, like the early 2000s and 90s. And what a I guy. just, his style has always been so consistent and it's, it's fun. It's like reckless, which is what, Rock and um, drums is for me. Like yeah. I want it to be fun and reckless, and you know, just just a fun little outlet to get all your frustrations and energy yeah. out into. So <laughs> I really do gravitate more towards his style. I love that guy. <laughs> well, and and it makes sense. I mean, as a as a piano player, when I was growing up, I mean, maybe Charlie Rich. Oh, yeah. good. I could have yeah. I could have paid attention to, but. I was paying attention to Billy Joel and Elton oh. John and oh. Jackson Brown, people that were, um, they were more visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I saw them more often. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, that, that makes a lot of sense. And now, um, with with where music is now, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of the country music stuff is a lot more Visual. dynamic yes, and, so and true. all of that. Yeah. So, um, probably a good place. I want to, I want to take a break for just a second because, um, I've got a friend of mine Ooh. that, uh, does, um, he has a program here in Nashville called instruments for education <gasps> nice. and he gathers instruments to put in schools for kids that don't have access to them and schools that don't have music budgets. So we're so going to cool. show a little piece of that, introduce everybody to instruments for education. Yes. And then we're going to come back and start talking about some of your songs. Sounds Love good. It. <laughs> Hey, Troy Castellano here from Instruments for Education. We're at one of our first stops here today on a Friday. We're delivering some tambourines and some shakers for an elementary school classroom. We're at Liberty Elementary School. Hey guys, I'm Troy Castellano. We started Instruments for Education as a way to put instruments into the hands of kids. Sometimes we donate directly to students, sometimes to teachers, and sometimes to full classrooms in their schools. We're based out of Nashville, Tennessee, and we service the Middle Tennessee area. Since we started, we've reached over 100 schools and donated over 500 instruments. If you'd like to make a request for an instrument, or you have an instrument to donate, or would like to contribute financially, visit our website at instrumentsforeducation.org. Thanks for supporting us, and thanks for helping keep music alive. Okay, so everybody check out Instruments for Education. I, um, before we get into your songs, I just remembered something that you had said. We were talking earlier about um, uh, how old you are, how old you aren't. Yeah, um, <laughs> true. And um, I, I was remembering um, something that you said in, in another interview that I was listening to. Um, somebody said, you don't really know who you are until you're 25. Yes. Was that, that you? been saying it. That was okay. me. Day one. Yeah. Now, I thought that was hilarious because yeah. <laughs> I went to college, never had music on my radar, did not have my first professional gig until I was probably 28. What? Really? So at 25, this kid had not figured it out yet. See? Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, yeah. So I did not know that. That's incredible. Now, um, um, uh, you know, you're right here on the edge. Mm -hmm. um, certainly American Blonde has done a, you know, kind of a significant pivot right, right now. That's right. right now. So That's right. Um, do you know who you are at 25? 
I, yeah, what do you have to say for yourself? I have to say <laughs> that I love who I am more at 25 than I ever did, like, before 25. I feel like, you know, right before then, you know, and everybody's different, but the frontal I lobe, agree. you know. Yeah, everybody you're says. You're not completely done developing in the brain. Or your skull yeah. isn't formed or some, yeah. some science of some We've sort. We've got some medical friends that I've always listened to. But, you know, it actually makes sense because I, I remember looking back and especially going back to music and growing and learning through music and expressing yourself. Right. Um, I never really felt completely comfortable and confident in the decisions I was making in the music industry mm -hmm. until I don't want to say as soon as you wake up on your 25th right. birthday, you're like, I right. got it all figured out. Right. right but right. it was kind of like between 25 and 26 that I started, you know, really becoming, you know, more confident in my skin. I could see the music that, too, that I was writing because and, obviously we're we're co-partners yeah. and sisters. So I, I think I've seen the change as well. So yeah. that's kind of like good for me to know because I'm not 25 yet, but I always I'm <laughs> just waiting for that day where I feel good about, you know, like yeah. everything going around and, and it just gets better confident. You know? Yeah. It you just, just gets keep better. growing and getting better and more comfortable with who you are yeah. and what you're doing. So it, it just, yeah. feels like animal over here. You know, you just, everything's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Chaos. I love well, it. Well, and so it, it makes you, I mean, you've got, you, you just finished this first significant project right. of yours. Yeah. I mean, you've certainly done other things, but this, you know, this turned a, a lot of corners for you guys. It did, yeah. Um, I mean, so Tinka, are you glad that you've got a sister that's at least 25 that can guide you? Or is this her kind of saying, yeah, clearly Tinka's not 25 yet. Oh, she doesn't no. know anything. It, feel, it does, honestly. <laughs> I love the way we are right now because it's yeah. great to have a balance of like, somebody knows what we're doing and then somebody just shows up and brings the energy. I don't <laughs> agree with this at all. No, no, kidding. you're crazy. Yeah. This girl is like the most energetic ball of like fire and, and creativity. Thanks. And like, and on stage especially, I mean, it's just, I, it's something so funny about American Blonde is, of course we're sisters, people wonder how we work together and yeah. the answer is simple. Like we just know each other so well. So yeah. we know how to do that. But yeah. like, you know, even on stage in the studio, I've actually noticed this last few times, we're two so different souls and personalities, but mm. we really bring out, you know, each other's lows and highs. Yeah. You know, we, we, we take care of that. It's so weird, too, yeah. because being sisters, I think I said this the other day to somebody, too, but, like, if somebody's in not as uppity of a mood and the other one's, you know, just chilling, like, we'll bring it up to match, to make it level, you know yeah. what I mean? And we then balance vice each versa, other. like we definitely balance each other out. Yeah. So it's cool. Cause you need that when you're co, you know, oh, yeah. in a business together. Yeah. yeah. It's very important. So yeah. Well, and, and not only the, the being sisters part, but just the having played together yes. a lot part. I did a, a show recently for a friend. It was her first full band show in two years. Oh, wow. Cool. And um, it was a big festival show. It was kind of a big deal. Nice. Yeah. So I put the players together for her and I knew they were not going to have a lot of rehearsal. So I made sure and had players that I had worked with before because <laughs> I knew if I'd better. worked with them, Jonathan mm -hmm. is helping us working behind the cameras right now. That's who's so cool. Who I play with in a band together. And you know, from just having played together, there's a point where something goes off the rails mm -hmm. If you can make eye contact you just, with them and it's like, yep. do, 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 yeah. do, do, you know where I'm about to do. <laughs> it's like telepathically. Yeah. 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 It's and amazing. Can, yeah. That's cool, man. That's awesome. It's so true. I know, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We're like that with our band bros too. Like, it's so funny. Like we're, we were talking earlier about our girl, Amber, that's on our team. Right. Everyone associated with American Blonde is literally, we have hand chosen them from Mississippi. We brought them out of Mississippi. We brought them to Nashville and yeah. we're like this whole family just, you know, in, so basically where I'm going with is the band boys on stage with us. We same energy, same, you know, telepathic connections. Same Mississippi understanding. <laughs> we get it. Sure, you know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> so, so as we look back at this and I say, look back, I mean, you know, it hasn't been that long since this project came right, out. Right. But, um, you know, let's let's look at at some of the songs, you know, the uh, you know, you were just talking about bringing everybody in uh, from home yeah. um, because they kind of share your vision. Uh, maybe it's something in the water, maybe Ooh, something, in the, something water. in the water. Yeah, yeah. that's I'd, that's it. Something in the water was actually the very first song I remember writing uh, 
trying to really pull back to our roots. You know, when we were growing in music, like I said earlier, we, we were all over the place yeah, I don't trying to find ourselves, you know, still growing, trying to figure out what's our best style, what's yeah. our best genre. Yeah. And, um, and when we, you well, wrote this one, it just really, you were like, this is it. We're going to, we're going to hone it in. We're yeah. going to grill in the reins and get back to being, you know, where we're from. It's so true. And especially like with that onstage energy too. So yeah. I wanted to bring that to life in something in the water. So yeah. got to work on it. I know Tinka and like her mannerisms on stage and her little, uh, accents that she likes to add into songs. And so we really just brought that to life and it's got a huge hint and I think per personally, like the perfect sound of who American Blonde is yeah. and like all the music that has inspired us is like coming out into this new kind of sound. Yeah. It feels like um, it feels like American Blonde turned 25. You know what I'm saying? Ah, <laughs> full of circle. Full circle. Um, <laughs> that's what it feels like. It does. We finally made she's it. A, she's <laughs> growing up. Um, so, yeah, that's exactly what we did in Something in the Water. And um, after writing that one, it was just so clear on the the message, the songwriting styles, the music that we wanted to you know, run with. Right. And so that's exactly why we named the very first album from American Bond, mm -hmm. Something in the Water. That's right. And it wouldn't have been, you know, right to do the music video anywhere else but the place that started it all. That's so right, man. We went back to the Delta and we gathered all our all of our hometown friends and they helped us bring the video to life, which you can check out on our YouTube channel, American Blonde. It's right. so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. Such a good time. Um Certainly, certainly I love that. And you can hear all of the, the, the blues, yeah. you know, yeah. airings behind it, you know, mm -hmm. all the, the stuff that y'all listened to growing up. Um, one of the things that I also took note of, and I wonder how many people realize this. Um, one of your other releases, um, all horses firing. Yeah, right? buddy. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people that saw it or have seen the video or heard the song, you know, one of the things they might think is cool is that in the video, you actually play a race car driver, right? Playing one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now, <She is> one. <laughs> that's not playing. It's not, well, I don't know if they would ever allow anybody on the track that didn't, hadn't, yeah. hadn't gone through the proper like training yeah. or anything. So that's actually the reason why I wrote the song All Horses Firing. It's because um, our dad used to race um, back in the day before he had yeah. three little girls. And he used to have three race cars. And he said, every you know, anytime you have a, a daughter, you got to sell a car. And so <laughs> he I lost remember all of them. He lost them all. <laughs> and so I would look back on pictures and I remember being 16 and I was like, I want to do this. And he was like, I can't help you there. If you want to do that, you're going to have to figure it out for yourself because that is not you know, an, an easy industry. And so thankfully, uh, long story short, I have some ties with like the car industry. So I'm able to, you know, I've got this car that was great deal, mm -hmm. kind of broken up and we put it back together. And mm -hmm. then I started tracking it. You know, you have to go to classes mm -hmm. and take, you know, like the driver's ed yeah. stuff. Right. And uh, I'm so proud of her too, for <laughs> doing this because she's got all this um, car connections, like self-made, like you went into the depths of the unknown and you were like, <laughs> I'm going to do this. And then you ended up doing it. And Man. everybody's just, just loves her. She's like the, every time we go to a track or something, she's like the only girl out there. And everybody, all, all the like track daddies is what we like to call them. Right. Track daddies, just yeah. love like helping her out and like showing her stuff and getting oh, it figured out and everything. And dad loves it too. So dad like, does the family will come and we'll watch her race sometimes. And like, oh, it's, it's just the best experience. It literally is like, full circle for the family as well because racing is so big I, it father, is yeah you know? it's huge and it, mm -hmm. it's so much fun especially like music it's like something you can throw yourself into yeah. and just and like see how crazy you can get with it so I love seeing Tinka and the connections with music and and racing here recently so yeah. once I got to a point to where I'm like okay I can you know I'm an intermediate one driver now mm -hmm. I wrote a song All Horses Fire and that really was not just about driving but it was about you know anybody that's literally living life full speed ahead. You yep, don't plan on stopping. In the fast lane. Yeah, you're living life in the fast lane. Yeah. And so we played the Music City Grand Prix. And so we were like, well, why don't we get some video footage from that last year? And we kind of go in and out of like us just having fun on the track. And yeah. 
and, and playing on the stage. Oh, yeah. was, that was like my most favorite music video that we ever did. So now, was that fun. the the Grand Prix? Is that the thing you did with McGraw? That's, That's right. exactly year? what we did okay. last right. year. It was last year, okay. last August. Okay. Yeah, and Tim McGraw, hello, right. Right. was the headliner for that. <laughs> How so, cool is that? I know you know McGraw. I've, I've <laughs> left a few fingerprints in that camp yeah. on some of those records. Yeah. That's amazing, you guys. Yeah. That's cool. Man. Yeah. Well, so you said that um, your dad said he couldn't help you. That's right. Now, I there, there's a couple of, of ways that, that could go. I mean, musically, you know, I think about people that do the music business. And the music business is hard. Yeah, and, very hard. And, but those of us that wind up doing it, mm -hmm. we oftentimes don't realize how hard it is because we're that into doing it. That's there, right. It's so true. We're that, so that would also be one way that I could see him maybe saying, hey, I can't help you because he wants to know if you're really going to do it on your own. Absolutely. Actually, I'm so glad you said that Absolutely. because it was totally coming from a place of love in his heart. He, you know, has actually been our biggest supporter from day one. Yeah. But right. I do remember him thinking, like, if if you're going to make that happen, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to come from you. Probably right. because it's dangerous as well. Like, he he's like, I'll, let, I'll tell you anything you want to know, but I'm not going to push you into it. You know, you're going to have to yeah. financially and everything. Like, if you really want it that bad, I know you can, you can do it. So, like, it's, yeah. it's he's been such a great supporter. But I'm so glad that <laughs> to see you, like, do this on your own. It it's is, fun. like, so awesome. It's so empowering. Oh, well, man. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, it, 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 because that raises the the other side of that argument, which is he wants to be able to tell your mom, hey, hey, hey. I, I didn't right. have nothing to do with it. She did that on her exactly. own. I didn't help her because exactly. you don't want. He, he gets, didn't want. He gets yeah, because <laughs> I'm sure she's like, you are not going to take. She her hates it uh -huh. out yeah. there. She is like, why? Do you not love your life? Like yeah. you love your life. Are you right? okay? Like, I do this because I love my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's an right. adrenaline thing. It's it's fun. That's cool. It's crazy. <laughs> um, well, so the uh, the Grand Prix thing. I mean, clearly that went pretty well for you last year. I think it did. That was so much fun. Oh, we had such a great time last year that we're actually going to be playing there again this year. We got a call back. We got a call nice. back. <laughs> we're going to actually, yeah, we'll be playing the Music City Grand Prix this year in Nashville. I'm so glad that they're going to continue to do this because I remember I going to the first race thinking, I, I hope, hope they last. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was so, so new cool. and they were still figuring everything out. But now they've like, they've got it down. Yeah. And people are showing up and it's it's just so, too much fun. Oh, it's man. It's too much fun. It's, so. it's great. So, yeah, we're going to be actually on the iHeartRadio stage on that Friday, the 4th of August. Cool. And I believe we start our set at 3 p.m. That's right. So, we're so excited. So, yeah, if you guys are around uh, Nashville, during the Music City Grand Prix, we actually have this really fun link in our bio. You can click the link tree, and it should be the very first option That's you see right. to get your tickets to the Music City Grand tickets. Prix. Because there are going to be other amazing artists there as well. So many. Um, I know Flo Rida Flo is Rida. headlining. I know. What a what a turn from, like, <laughs> Tim McGraw to Flo Rida. Hey, but we're loving it. We're here for it. That is my whole childhood. I know. Flo Rida. Too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I know that... Um, I know that we're going to have to talk about another song of yours. <gasps> Let's go. That we got to collaborate on. That's Yay! right. But before that, I, I was I was thinking about this the other night, and I'm I'm wondering what your answer is going to be to this. I'm the piano player on stage. Typically, when you go to the show, the chicks are not that into the piano player. <laughs> He's in the back. <laughs> Whatever. They, no. Well, no. I mean, they're looking for the lead singer because he drives the boat. Or the guitar player is always throwing the picks out. I'm right. sorry, the no. drummer. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, no, so kidding. that's my question is because they're looking for something that's really kind of stands out. Now, you're the lead singer, typically. You're out front. You got the guitar on. You can slap the hands. You can do all that. Right. Yeah. But then you've got this rocker yeah. behind you yeah. that... that <laughs> Can rival Taylor on the hair flip. Stop. I'm well aware of that. <laughs> so, live show, which one of you is the bigger heartbreaker? Her. Me? For real. Yeah. Me? Heck yeah. Are you Girl. kidding me? I, well, that's the funny thing about me is like, I feel like I have this like, weird attribute about me that like, I might come across as like, yeah, but I'm actually like, wait, you think I'm cute? She's very, really? Her attitude is very Taylor Swift. Like, you know, like... Pre-Taylor Swift. Friends to everybody, but does the thing. You know what I, I mean? I do it, but, like, I'm also very, very awkward. This one, 
Oh, no, no. She could have her own TV show. Like, she <laughs> literally, she might be in the back, but she demands the energy, but, even if she doesn't even try. It's just ridiculous. I feel cool. like more people gravitate towards you because some people are scared of me. Some people <laughs> are scared of her. Like, gonna- I've seen you play. I I can understand that. <laughs> you don't want to make her mad. I yeah. can I got the understand sticks. that. <laughs> I got the sticks. Well, I just, I, I have a, a joke that I tell sometimes, when, but it's not really a joke. It's about people passing the note up on the stage and it's like, yeah. can you get me to the drummer? Can you get Stop. me to somebody else? Are you yeah. kidding? Yeah. So I'm sure you, you don't have to suffer that, but uh, I'm sure you both gather plenty of <laughs> that attention. That is so fun. I love we it. We could sit here all day being like, no, you, no, no you, you, no, you, no, no, you, no, you, no, you. <laughs> and then we get through the interview. It's like, yeah, it's me. It's yeah, really it's, me. It's, it's really me. It's <laughs> um, I love it. Good times. Okay, so um, let's talk about what we got to do together. That's right, your piano playing. Oh my goodness, Mm. I know where you're going. The song you've brought it to life with your piano skills. Well, it's it's one of the one of the things that I wanted to do when we started kind of talking about doing this. I got so disappointed watching people go live on Zoom and then just throw it out there and maybe the connection holds, maybe it doesn't, maybe the guitars are in tune, maybe they're not, Mm -hmm. um, just kind of throwing the music out there. Mm -hmm. And, um, I didn't want to do that. So we actually sat down with one of your songs that was not a piano arrangement originally. Oh, but it's right. now I'm questioning kind of, everything. It I know been. it should have been. <laughs> well, <laughs> but it start. is, it is now. So we've got our version. So, yeah. um, let's play that for everybody. Yay. Um, uh, title the song. It's dust on my wings. That's right. And it's very, 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 very special. Very sentimental to us. for us. I'm so happy that we got to do this with you. Oh, well, it means a lot. Let's uh, show that to everybody, and then when we come back. You can kind of tell us where it came from. Sounds Love good. It. Say it. 
sinners He's no stranger to my kind He may smile and shake his head But he won't be surprised Cause nobody lives forever So I'll live forever young I might be raised in hell down here When the call to heaven comes I'll roll in like an outlaw Jumping off a runaway train I won't be the only angel I won't be the only angel With a little dust on my Dust on my wings. Thank you for letting me do that with you guys. Oh, thank, thank you. you. You really did bring it to life. We yeah. cried. I remember the first time we played it together. I got chill bumps up and down my legs. <sighs> yeah. Just, it was beautiful. It was well, so pretty. So tell us, I, I know from even just the artwork of the song yeah. that it's significant. So, yeah. so talk about why. Oh, thank you. I Well, I wrote this song with a good friend of mine. Her name is Jordan Rayner. She's amazing. You should check her out. Um, and so it was actually the, one of the very first songs we wrote together. And it was during the time, I, I remember having brain fog during this write at, at the beginning of it because um, our Papa was going in and out of the hospital mm -hmm. and he wasn't doing well. And long story short, he was the reason why I ever even wanted to touch an instrument. Like, That's right. He was the best guitar picker. And he's not even blood related. No, he's, he's the our only person <laughs> in our family who was like musically a genius. Nobody yeah. else could touch an instrument. And um, he amazing. really did touch our souls with, you know, playing guitar when we were babies. Yeah. Like we grew up to him just sit we didn't even watch tv around them we just just played listened and to his sang stories together it's just so much fun and he kind of like tinka i'd like to think but of course he in the older days you know it was easier to be a you know a rebel hippie child yeah, man, you and know, so that's 70s that's who he was <laughs> yeah. and so like i remember thinking i want to write a song dedicated to him and so jordan really helped me bring that out and it's really for anybody out there that's like papa or tinka or any Anybody that's just like right. a rebel child, you know, you push the boundaries of life, but that doesn't mean you're not a good person. It doesn't, and it doesn't mean, mean you're not going to get into heaven. So, yeah. yeah. You just, you know, you got a little dust on your wings. Yeah, man, that's and all. And so, yeah, it's a very, very uh, sentimental um, ballad of ours that's on the Something in the Water album mm -hmm. out right now. And it's it'll always be one of our favorites. Yeah. So, so happy we got to do that with yeah. you. Well, it <laughs> was it was a very, very cool song. Oh, and thank you. I, uh, I appreciate that you guys were open to it. And I love what you just said. Um, what did I say? <laughs> you said, I you said um, we're not blood related, but he's the only person in our family that yes. could play an instrument. Yeah. All in the same sentence, you said we're not blood related and he is a member of our family. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which I just, uh, really I mean, I, I have people like that in my world too. You know uh, it. The best. I just, uh, I just love that. Yeah. Um, I definitely am looking forward to uh, seeing what comes next. <gasps> Yay! We're excited. Um, I know you've got a lot of new things coming, but I don't know what all you're prepared to talk about. Oh, well, man. we so. will leave you with the fact that we have actually been in, in and out of the studio, uh, picking apart some of our very favorite new originals that we have coming That's out. Right. And uh, one in particular we are obsessed with, and we're actually gearing up to do some photos. We're going to do a music video, and we may or may not be pushing it to radio here very, very soon. Let's go. Like super soon. So excited, <laughs> nice. man. So yeah, it's so exciting. So definitely stay in touch with us through all the fun socials at AmericanBlondeMusic.com. And yeah, it's going to be so much fun. We're so ready. This is like the part where we're like shaking with anxiousness to That's get right. it out. You it's know? our favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and because I want everybody to, to be able to be supportive of it when it's happening, I just want to make sure and say it out loud again. 
everything they can get to all of your stuff through AmericanBlondeMusic.com. That's, That's right. right. Okay. That's right. That wasn't always the way it was. It was not. That's right. But now okay. we, we've got everything <laughs> certified <laughs> and ready to go. We've got our link tree on Instagram. Yeah. And just find us on Instagram, <laughs> American Blonde. Yeah. American Blonde Music. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll be following. Thank you. If Jeff. I can help you, let me know. Oh my goodness. We love you. You are. You're awesome. the best. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having us today. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> I appreciate you doing it, and uh, we'll be listening for American Blonde. <laughs> and that is American Blonde. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Nada and Tinka, for dropping by and having a lovely conversation with us. Uh, a few other thank yous. Tommy Leland, thank you for recording and capturing the audio for Dust on My Wings. And Randy Allen for the stellar video work again. Thank you, sir. Um, Jonathan Warren for helping us capture the interview uh, with American Blonde and Turk McNamara of Turk's Lounge for loaning us the space and for helping keep Nashville how it used to be. Putting the songwriter first. Thank you, sir. Um, we appreciate you guys. If you've got thoughts on what you're seeing, what you're hearing, we would love to know. You can email us at jeff at mcmahononkeys.com. And we will see you next time right here with McMahon on Keys. <laughs>